The Houston Astros are back home to start a four-game series against the Seattle Mariners. Jordan Lyles gets the start for the Strohs three days after recording his first career save. Seattle comes to town looking to turn things around and stop a six-game losing streak. Astros baseball is next on Comcast Sportsnet. Live from Minute Maid Park in Houston, Texas, Comcast Sportsnet brings you Houston Astros baseball. The Astros return home tonight. It's the first of seven at home and the first of four against the Seattle Mariners. Good evening, everybody. Bill Brown and Alan Ashby. The Astros probably got to bed well, sometime after 3 a.m. Seattle came in from a day game way up in the northwest, and these two teams hope to be fresh tonight against each other after the Astros dropped two of three to the White Sox, Ash. Well, you mentioned that White Sox series. Seattle's had their problems as well of late losing six straight. So a couple of clubs trying to get things going and uh, certainly a tired Astros bunch. Both like what they're seeing from their third baseman this year. It's Matt Dominguez and it's Kyle Seeger. Matt Dominguez has been so good recently driving home runs when the club has needed them. Uh, he has just been driving the baseball all over the yard here, in particular in the second half. Matt Dominguez swinging the bat quite well. And again, this is one of the home runs out in Anaheim. Uh, big game winning swings one after another and it's becoming a Matt Dominguez that looks like he realizes the situation and takes hold of it does exactly what the club needs on the Seattle side Kyle Seager their MVP from last year very fine left hand hitter good third baseman lots of pop in the bat 21 dingers this year and he can go the other way as well Kyle Seager is that one guy on the Seattle Mariners ball club that they count on to come up with big swings. Mariners will start Erasmo Ramirez. First time he's faced the Astros. And it's Jordan Lyles for Houston. He's been swinging back and forth between the rotation and the bullpen. It has been really amazing. He's had a save, a hold, and a couple of wins in the last four times he's been in ball games. And the two starts, he's taken seven innings plus, one of them seven and a third innings. And he's starting to get back to becoming that guy that he was early on in the season. He's also had some rather flashy defense interjected in there and Jordan Lyles is much needed in this rotation. Coming up, Mr. August, Jason Castro has been phenomenal this month. Julia Morales will have more about Jason in just a moment.
Astros and Mariners opening an, opening a four-game series here tonight. And Jason Castro returns to the lineup batting cleanup. Now, there's ups and downs to every player's season, but Jason Castro is definitely on one of those ups right now. Rolling right along and recently earned American League Player of the Week honors for the second time this season. It's, he said it was something that's very special to him. But he is playing really well as of late. And last time he was here at Minute Maid Park, hit two home runs and a double. So he is happy to be back. But not just swinging a hot bat, but he's also being very selective at the plate. Here's Skipper Bo Porter with our Geico quote of the game. He uses the whole field. He, he drives the ball the other way. He, um, you know, he stays into his legs. His strike zone discipline, I feel like, has gotten even better as the season has gone along. That's why his walk total is starting to go up. He, um, he's doing a great job of understanding situations um, and, and, and driving, it, driving in some big runs. Let's take a look at the numbers in Kesha's last eight games. 522 is what he's batting. Four jacks, one in the series against the White Sox. He's driven in six, scored 11. Hitting coach John Maley really enjoys working with a guy like Castro said when his rhythm and timing are consistent he can do really good things on the baseball field and he's seen the ball very well right now so we hope to see more of that bat tonight as the Astros take on the Mariners Jordan Lyles on the mound and we'll have first pitch in lineups with the guys in the booth next is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. By Progressive, visit progressive.com today. And by Jack in the Box. Go big at a participating Jack in the Box with Jack's really big chicken sandwich combos for only $3.99 plus tax. Another warm one downtown in Houston, Texas. The Astros and the Mariners meeting for the first in a four-game series. They have seven games remaining with each other this season. And the Astros ready to go as they begin this homestand after a one and two road trip to Chicago. Manager Eric Wedge, who has been out of the action for a while, has returned, but his club is 0 and 6 since he returned as the skipper after having some health issues. And Robbie Thompson, there, who was nearest the camera, was the interim skipper. Starting lineup for the M's Brad Miller, shortstop, Nick Franklin, second base, Kyle Seeger, third base, Raul Abanez, the DH, batting fourth. Justin Smoke at first base, Franklin Gutierrez in right field, Michael Saunders left field, Dustin Ackley center field, Humberto Quintero, the former Astro, the catcher. Right hander Jordan Lyles on the hill for the Astros tonight. And Jordan Lyles has been back and forth as a starter, as a reliever of late. He sure has. There's strike one to Brad Miller. 
imagine it's uh, got to be a little confusing for Jordan Lyles to figure where he's going. But as a starter this year, six and six, five fifteen that ERA, and the opposition hitter hitters hitting 289. Slap to shortstop Jonathan VR glides to his left and makes a strong throw to get Brad Miller one out. Defensively for the Astros tonight behind the plate. It is Jason Castro two time player of the week this year Brett Wallace at first around the infield Jose Altuve Jonathan VR and Matt Dominguez in the outfield Brandon Barnes in center flanked by LJ Hose in right and Robbie Grossman in left. Now second baseman Nick Franklin a rookie of the year candidate in the American League. Franklin has not hit much in August but he with 39 runs batted in is tied for the rookie RBI lead in the American League 227 batting average and 11 bombs for Nick Franklin. Showing bunt, he takes Lyle's first pitch and it's strike one to Franklin. Franklin has hit very well against Astros pitching 381 and he hit a grand slam off Jordan Lyle's back on the 21st of July. Gets a curveball and that makes it an 0 and 2 count. Jordan 22 years old. Wide receiver in high school. He was from uh, Hartsville, South Carolina. Had thoughts of college football at one point. And the South Carolina Gamecocks, his team, making its debut in college football tonight against North Carolina. It's a one ball, two strike count. Fastball here in the first inning as a starter, 92 93. In that recent game when he pitched as a, a closer and picked up the save, he was up to 96 miles an hour. in the dirt with that one. That makes it a two ball two strike count. That was the curveball that picked up so many strikeouts in fact 10 in one start at Seattle against these Mariners back in the early part of the season. And that was an overpowering game for him a six to one ball game seven innings of three hit shutout ball for Jordan. But then uh, the home run by Franklin touched him up here. As he met the Mariners back on the 21st of July, and he lost that game, giving up nine earned runs in four innings. So for Jordan's career against Seattle, he's 0 and 1 with a 7.36 ERA. Closely held souvenir. Got to protect the fries as well. <laughs> Three balls and two strikes. Do you get fries with that? The, uh, the foul pop. A cheeseburger, fries, and don't hold the baseball. <laughs> He's not going the cheeseburger route. He's doing the hot dog thing. Deep drive to left field. Robbie Grossman looks up at the seats, and that's into the left field seats. And opposite field homer for Franklin. Uh, his second long ball against Lyles this season makes it one to nothing. Franklin hitting number 12 of the season. He was hitting only 111 for the month of August. Strange game. The guys can come into a series and you hear all the talk. The guy's not swinging the bat well, and all of a sudden, one swing can turn it around. Very good power and picks a great part of the ballpark to shoot at right at the center field side of those Crawford boxes. Mariners brought in the fences at Safeco Field this year. They are fourth in the league in homers. That's number 156 for their club. Kyle Seeger's the batter. That's strike one to Seeger. Seeger has unloaded 21 home runs, one more than he hit all of last year. He's driven in 61 with a 277 batting average. A very fine season for Seeger, who was the club MVP a year ago. That one bounces up there for a one ball, one strike count. Seeger leads the club in hits with 140. Came out of an 0 for 21 slump when he hit a go ahead two run homer at Texas. That was just about two weeks ago. And swings at that breaking pitch for a one and two count. There is your early funky swing, swing award leader in the clubhouse. Sure is. Look like one of those fake swings guys will come up with. <laughs> Seeger, 25 years old, a third round pick in 09 from Charlotte, North Carolina. Went to University of North Carolina. Hits this one, and that goes in the air behind the plate. Castro back near the screen with the grab. 
two outs. And the Mariners just have not hit lately. They've scored 12 runs during their six game losing streak and hit 212 in those last six games. They've scored 46% of their runs on the long ball this year. Raul Abanez has helped in that department. He's bashed 25 homers. He's driven in 60 runs. And his batting average is 251 for Ibanez. Quite a season for him rejoining this club. This is his third stint with the Mariners in his career. And he looks at ball one. He was drafted by this club back in 92. Age and all considered a remarkable season for Ibanez. And the age is 41 now. There's a strike, and it's a one ball, one strike count. Since the All Star break, Raul has slowed down considerably, hitting only 206 in 102 at bats with one homer and four runs batted in. He hits this one out to left center field. Brandon Barnes on the run. Good running play. And that ends the top of the first with one run scoring on the Franklin opposite field homer to give the Mariners a 1 0 lead. Come up, Bo Porter's lineup card starts with Robbie Grossman in left field. He goes with LJ Hose in right field. Jose Altuve at second base. Jason Castro, the catcher. Matt Dominguez plays third base with Chris Carter, the DH. It's Brett Wallace at first base. Brandon Barnes in center field. Jonathan VR, the shortstop. Right hander Erasmo Ramirez, 23 years of age on the hill, 4 and 1, so he's been quite successful. Mariners have scored well, 4 and 5, 44, the ERA. Opposition hitters hitting under the 270 mark. And eight dingers in 43 innings, so the long ball has cost him. Defensively for Seattle tonight. Behind the plate, Umberto Quintero. Around the infield, right to left, Justin Smoke, Nick Franklin, Brad Miller, and Kyle Seeger. In the outfield, Dustin Ackley, former second baseman, flanked by Franklin Gutierrez, former center fielder, and Michael Saunders. Good outfield coverage for Seattle in that alignment. Robbie Grossman is first up. Robbie has been sizzling with the bat in the month of August. He had a 14 game hitting streak. It was snapped last night. 273 for the season. Four homers, 21 runs batted in for Robbie. He hit 365 during that 14 game streak, but Chris Sale and the White Sox stopped him last night. Now there's strike one for Ramirez in his first outing against the Astros. 23 years old. Signed as a free agent at 07. He's from Nicaragua. Off the plate for a one and one count. Last year he pitched 16 times for the Mariners. Ramirez was one and three with a 3.36 ERA for them. Take something off there, and that takes the count to one ball, two strikes. As a hitter, you want to be watching this closely. He's gone fastball, changeup, changeup. Just a Compact delivery. 
Think of uh, Jim Cott a bit at the end of his career. Oh, yeah. Struck him out looking for out number one. Comes back fastball on that fourth pitch up and in and maybe a favorable call for Ramirez. Yeah. Q might have stolen one for him. LJ Hose is next. Marco Quintero has played many games in this ballpark with the Astros. Still a nice receiver. At strike one at 92 to Hose at 276 with one homer, five runs batted in. LJ trying to snap an 0 for 15 right now. Plays off the change up to make it a one ball, one strike count. This is the 23rd start since the trade that brought Hose to Houston for him. And he looks it over for a two ball, one strike count. Bud Norris, one of the other principals in that trade, pitched last night for Baltimore. That's fouled away, and it's a two ball, two strike count. Big weekend coming up at this ballpark. Nice promotions. Should be fun as these two teams do battle. And tomorrow night we'll see a major league debut for the Mariners number one pitching prospect. I want Walker. That's called a swing and a strikeout for out number two. He tried to uh, uh, prevent that swing by going down to a knee but the appeal to Dan Bellino brought the strikeout. A couple of high fastballs for the early strikeouts. Let's get that bat started and the inability to hold it back. Like Mike Everett, the home plate umpire, made the call himself. Two outs now, and it's Altuve batting. Jose trying to pull out of a tailspin. He went one for 13 in the White Sox series. 269, four homers, 42 runs batted in. And there's strike one to him. He has hit 152 in his last 11 ball games. Stand over there in the on deck circle in the dugout. Watch what Ramirez is bringing. No sliders until you step into the box in the first pitch. Good little slider. And back to back. Now, no balls, two strikes. The Astros are missing King Felix Hernandez in this four game series. He pitched yesterday at home against the Texas Rangers and they let him up. Rolled out to shortstop. Brad Miller with the play. Make it a 1 2 3 first for Erasmo Ramirez and a 1 0 Seattle lead. And Methodist is giving away 10,000 replica rainbow batting practice jerseys prior to the 610 start against the Mariners. Call 1 877 9 Astros or visit astros.com 
for tickets. Jordan Lyles back to work for the Astros just three days after making or recording his first major league save. Now in that situation, usually you save the ball, and he wanted to, said he would have sent it home, put it up in the house, but instead he handed it over to David Martinez, who earned his first major league win on that same night. Jordan said, I remember getting my first major league win. It was a very big deal in my life, and I wanted everything from that game, so he knew it. That ball belonged to Martinez, guys. Very nice gesture on his part. And he came in with the bases loaded, two outs, and a 10 to 8 lead, and got that save with a strikeout. Now, Justin Smoke leads it off in the second inning. Smoke takes a look at strike one. At 14 homers, 35 runs batted in, and a 252 batting average, trying to put together a late season surge. Hasn't had much going since July 1st, hitting 260. Just not a real streak for Smoke so far this year. One ball, one strike, but there's still time for a player to get hot. Still a month to go. One ball, two strikes. It's a changeup that and I've said it numerous times this year. I think could help Jordan Lyles considerably if he could turn to that a bit more. Find a way to utilize that as a, a strike. Especially when behind in the count. Infield is shifted around playing smoke to pull. It's a different kind of shift than we sometimes see from the Astros because Matt Dominguez is playing where he often does with a right handed batter at third base. He is not shifted around at all. Big cut there and smoke strikes out. A little slider on the hands. We don't see that pitch a whole lot against the left hand hitters from Jordan Lyles. It's this start on the inside edge and break off the plate. Well, according to the numbers we get, Jordan Lyles has thrown his slider 1% of the time this year. Now they shift the other way on Franklin Gutierrez. Center fielder who's been injured quite a bit, and he's in right field tonight, but been primarily a center fielder in his career. Very fine outfielder. 246, six homers, 12 runs batted in. He was out with a tight hamstring. It just kept nagging him and couldn't get it healthy for a couple of months. One ball, one strike. He's been dogged by several injuries in his career. In recent years, ranked by some as the best defensive center fielder in the game. Mm -hmm. That's in the air to center field, sending Barnes way back toward Towels Hill. Still on the run, watching that one go up on the hill. He picks it up, and Gutierrez is in with a double. Fifth double of the year for Franklin Gutierrez. Right now, you have to be standing on second base thinking, man, I hit every bit of this ball. And don't even come close to getting it out. Brandon Barnes. Gave it all he had. You're just going to come up shy if, if you try to play reasonably tight there in center field. Now it's Michael Saunders batting. And the left fielder with 10 homers, 39 runs batted in, had a 235 average. That's a runner at second and one out. Saunders takes it and it's ball one. Saunders uh, had a period of four homers in six games from late July through early August. Fouls it back and it's a one ball one strike count to Michael. Michael's 26 years old. He's from Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. He can really roam the outfield as well. Yeah. Ackley, as you mentioned, has been a second baseman playing center field tonight, but Saunders and Gutierrez very well established as fine major league outfielders. In the dirt. And the count runs to two balls and a strike. Jordan Lyles has 13 major league wins, 26 losses, and a 5.19 ERA. Since the All Star break, the batting average against his fastball is 350. He's, 
He pitched two and two. He's also pitched behind a lot in that span. And when he's come in with the fastball pitching from behind, he's tended to come right to the heart of the plate. Full we'll count to Michael Saunders. As a reminder, as you enjoy a cold one, to look forward to Miller time later in tonight's game. Brought to you by Miller Lite. Ackley is on deck. Astros are going with this six man starting rotation right now. Jared Cozart got the start last night, went six innings, giving up one run. Only one relief pitcher worked in the game, Lucas Harrell. So the bullpen's in good shape for this game tonight. VR went behind the runner, Gutierrez, to second base. Bull Porter telling the people who cover the ball club on a daily basis that uh, his bullpen has enough rest. Everybody's ready to go tonight. That's ball four in tight, and Saunders takes the first walk of the game for Lyles. There's 39 walks for Jordan in 118 innings now. And Castro goes out. They talk it over with Ackley, the batter. There's been an update on the two injured catchers. Carlos Corporan feeling a lot better from his concussion. He's on the seven day concussion disabled list. Max Stassi, not so much so. Max is still having some problems. Ackley's two for two against Lyles. He's on a six game hitting streak, and it's a good one. 11 for 20 with two homers in his last four games. 256, three homers, 22 runs batted in for Dustin Ackley. Converted second baseman, as Ash mentioned. And a first round pick in 09. He was kind of the boy a year ago as a second baseman. He was going to be the, the youngster that was among the leaders moving into the future with this club and it didn't work out. He had a horrible start to this season and came back as a center fielder. Miles looked down at his footing after delivering ball two there and it's two and oh with Quintero on deck. Actually, last year hit 226, he had 607 at bats, and Mariners not so patient with him this time around. With that demotion to Triple A, he shoots one, and that's foul. Two balls and a strike to Dustin Ackley from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. He also played at North Carolina, so it's the same uh, battle that uh, is happening in college football tonight. South Carolina, Jordan Lyles. And North Carolina, Ackley. Bouncer up the middle. Altuve stepping on second, throwing the first for a double play to end the second inning. With no runs, one hit, and a man left. And it's one to nothing, Mary.
Bottom two, one nothing Mariners, and time for our AT&T tweet of the game from Darren W. Awesome how MILB.com has Springer as the background. The Chiefs for 40-40. He's talking about George Springer, who's with the Oklahoma City Red Hawks. Only five games remaining. I love this graphic countdown here. Needs three home runs, though, to get to 40-40. They're playing now, so I will be on, I guess, scoreboard watch down here, guys. Very good, Julia, on MILB.com. Let's see how Mr. Springer does in those remaining five games. That is a milestone that has not been achieved in the minor leagues for many, many years. Jason Castro at 282 with 18 homers has 52 runs batted in. He's currently on a seven game hitting streak. Had the night off last night in Chicago. He went three for six with a homer in that series. And there's strike one. It was probably a very solid idea on the part of Old Porter rather than putting him in against a tough lefty, Chris Sale. Left handed hitters were hitting 140 against Sale. Whoops. So that didn't uh, really throw Castro off as far as being very uncomfortable with a guy with an extremely difficult delivery for a left handed batter. And he needs rest anyway. Ask Jason why he thought he's made such great progress against left hand pitching. And he said just simply playing against more left handed starters, he feels like has helped him. When he does handle the fastball, it's given him confidence to feel like he doesn't have to overreact that quickly. And so he just stays back and in a great hitting position, even on the sliders. That was in tight on him, and it's two and two. Astros hit 326 against the Mariners and 43 at bats. Dominguez and Carter to follow in the Houston second inning. Castro's five and seven against Seattle. There's the breakdown on Castro. Fouls out back. That was a good swing. Very good swing. He starts from dead still hands and then just kind of pushes from that point. See, hands don't go up or down. And just at the point when he decides it's swing time, he lets it fly. And that's the easiest way to bring barrel directly to ball. Unless we set them both down on the ground together. Well, that would work as well. Not sure you're going to get a whole lot of distance out of that one. It's three balls, two strikes. Now, I found it very difficult, if not impossible, to leave the hands still and not kind of rely on some kind of rhythm that mm -hmm. gets you going and lead with maybe the, the front elbow a little bit. But he just starts it from that position. He rips a line drive and it's foul. You know, you're, you're emphasizing a very important part of hitting that uh, the scouts look at all the time. There was an article um, on Carlos Correa today in the Bleacher Report, and it talked about what tremendous hands Carlos Correa has, how his hands are in a good position, and they can really produce some outstanding hitting. This left hand goes directly to the baseball when he decides to swing. When you watch most hitters, those hands might pump up and or down some combination and then when they start their swing the lead hip starts to fly the lead elbow rises not for Jason Castro it's that top hand the left hand that goes from the stop position directly to the baseball. He takes a walk would you say he has very quiet hands. Yes exactly. Paul Molitor was a guy I thought who had the quietest hands I had ever watched. And, and I still feel that way, but a guy who had well over 3,000 hits in his great career. Yep. And watching Jason Castro, he has that same type of approach just steady, quiet hands. Good quality. Now, Matt Dominguez on a three game hitting streak at 240 with 19 homers, has 66 runs batted in. Domingo's really been bashing the ball lately. He just turned 24 yesterday. It's a foul tip strike one. He went five for eight in the White Sox series with a homer and two runs batted in. This guy's swings have just become much more aggressive. And especially when you need that big swing late in the ballgame. But that's what's been really eye popping. The way he's been able to turn around a 96 98 mile per hour fastball late in the game and 
he ripped one uh, a long way. I think it was a slider actually off Addison Reed in Chicago, but we've seen him turn around some of those good fastballs too. He homered off uh, the Oakland closer Grant Balfour earlier this year in a key situation in the ninth inning here. And last year he took a role as Chapman deep in Cincinnati. So he's got a quick bat, but he's also been hitting breaking balls. He had a hanging breaking ball a couple of nights ago. Roll to third. There's a quick throw to second for the force play. Seeger got it to Franklin for the out on Castro, out number one. Slow roller, and he got that ball onto Franklin with something on it. Just rolls over the top of this baseball. And the reason why, to me, it's important that he's also hit breaking balls is that some guys can go up there and just guess fastball, and if they get that fastball, they're going to juice it. But what he's done has been juicing everything he's seen in, in especially those key situations. I thought there might have been a shot at the double play had that throw come back on to first base. Mm -hmm. Chris Carter at 218 with 26 homers has 70 runs batted in. Well, his numbers are looking very good right now in the homers and RBI department. He's hit 304 with four bombs against Seattle this year. Broken bat liner to third. Seeger throwing back to first. No double play. And it's out number two. Now, if you could just let Carter wear a gray uniform playing in these home games. Isn't that crazy? Goes on the road and just explodes. Well, that's a good short swing to the baseball. Chris had a very big series. It's the White Sox, six for 12, three homers, six runs batted in. Crazy thing about this game is next year Carter may flip the numbers around. He may be great at home and struggle on the road. Brett Wallace pulls one foul. Well, in fact, that topic came up today. One of the uh, people covering the ball club asked Bill Porter about it, and he said, "I don't really have a reason for it, but there, there's nothing that jumps out at anybody." About the home road split on Chris Carter. He said if he keeps playing, it's probably not going to be an issue at all. I think that's reality in this game. Snap throw to first by Quintero. Oh, yeah, he likes to throw to the bases, Ash. Boy, does he ever. Sometimes catchers will be accused of taking strikes away from their pitchers. Inside edge, and they still get the strike call despite Quintero firing out of there, but boy, is he quick. And that's unique throwing to first base clearing the body to the left side while throwing behind the left hand hitter. Pretty close play there. It's kind of an early warning system for the Mariners. He used to do that a lot with the Astros. Well you know how that goes. Second inning first game of a four game series. He does that. All right let's file that one away. Yeah, you'll hear it in the dugout. You know that's in the scouting report guys. Just a reminder. Guy loves to throw. Red Wallace during his four game hitting streak is five for 16. Hit a home run in the White Sox series. This goes out to second base. And Franklin takes it on over to smoke for out number three. And after two, it's one to nothing. See ya.
brought to you by MD Anderson, making cancer history. This moment in history goes to August 29, 1948. Jackie Robinson hits for the backward cycle. Homers in the first, triples in the fourth, doubles in the sixth, singles in the eighth. The only time in his career that Robinson hit for the cycle. What a dynamic player. Stealing bases, diving for balls. Just set a pace that was very difficult for anyone to keep up with. He was a whirling dervish on the bases. Dealing with hatred that I don't know anybody else could have dealt with. I, I know I couldn't have. Very carefully selected for that reason by Branch Rickey to be able to deal with that. Humberto Quintero, a real fan favored with the Astros, comes back now with Seattle hitting 248, four homers, 13 runs batted in. For Quintero, he was with the Phillies earlier this year. And Seattle signed him when he became a free agent. Two balls, no strikes. I felt early in the season, Jordan Lyles threw the four seam fastball, higher velocity than we're seeing right now. Right at the knees, ran it in for early strikes, put himself in a good position. And not that he threw that four seam fastball every time, but he was so consistent with it. And now what it feels like is we're seeing a lot of sinking two seam fastballs, and he's getting behind in the count a lot. And then right through the heart of the plate. And I don't know if that's two or four seam right there, but very hittable zone. And it just it it's kind of pitching backwards. You get behind and then you get stuck working that guaranteed fastball right through the heart of the plate. King Terrell's making his 17th start for Seattle. That's nowhere close and it's three and two. Q, who is now 35 years old, came to the Astros in 05. And he was here through the 2011 season. Last fastball four seamer at 94 and then misses high. Look, don't get me wrong. And the reason I bring it up is because I think the stuff of Jordan Lyles, and especially when you combine it with the fact that he's 22 years of age, adds up to a situation where I would anticipate him having a chance to be highly successful. That's his second walk of the game. Brad Miller's the batter. Miller grounded out. Pretty good looking young shortstop, Ash. Is that, and they feel like uh, obviously he's got a chance to be a good one, supplanting a guy who's played great defense for years. Brendan Ryan, who is on the bench, and that's where he has been now for weeks. That's ball one to Miller. Miller is on a seven game, or had a seven game hitting streak. Takes that one. Moves around well at shortstop. Seems to have a good arm. Count is two balls, no strikes. Of course, he wouldn't be able to duplicate the fielding skills of Brendan Ryan, but Ryan typically has not hit well. That's in for a strike, and that makes it two and one. Once again, two and zero. Oh, fastball really in a great hitting zone, taken for a strike. Miller came up in late June from Triple A Tacoma. That one came up and hit him. Two balls, two strikes. Miller's 23 years old, born in Orlando, Florida, went to Clemson. Billy Spires School. Billy Spires, former punter yeah. for Clemson. Clemson Tigers. How do you think they'll do this year, Ash? Oh man, you got me out of my league right there. Behind second base, Jonathan Villar is underneath it. That's out number one. How about uh, Texas A now? What's your prediction for the Aggies? Well, you know they're the one team that beat Alabama a year ago, and. I don't follow all the comings and goings of, uh, of youngsters that uh, that come into all the colleges and leave toward the NFL and all that sort of thing. But I would think they've got a chance of being mighty good again. Now who do you think will be the starting quarterback for the Aggies against the Rice Owls. <laughs> well I know it won't be Johnny Manziel. That's true. 
So how's that for an answer for you? That's that's factual. Nick Franklin hit the home run into the Landry's Crawford boxes to left field. This one goes out to left center. A long run for Brandon Barnes. Barnes back to the warning track, and he reaches up and snags it. And here's the runner around second, retracing, and he'll get back to first. That throw came over VR, and it was a short hop play for Altuve. But Quintero was really stretching it out. He had rounded second base, and then he had a ways to go to get back to first. Good catch by Barnes. Just. Simply outstanding defense again. What's new from Brandon Barnes? When you're a catcher or somebody who doesn't run extremely well, you've got to find ways to score when given the opportunity. Quintero does that. He goes around the bag and then retraces. Everything's perfect and had it sized up to where he could get back. That's really what you want from a guy who doesn't run exceptionally well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He knew the uh, limitations. He got back. He stretched the envelope a little bit. How do you do that? Well, because they're not really uh, flexible. They're stretchy, not. if you will. There, there's a special machine that you can buy. I've always been confused by that one. Kyle Seeger, the batter. There's ball one. You can buy this envelope stretching machine for $49.95. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you can get it online. Now, that wouldn't be the neat desk, but that's a. Probably one of those. Nice, I hadn't heard of that. <laughs> Seeger takes it, it's ball two. How about some of these products that are available online? You've got to be kidding. Now, have you bought them all so you can actually yes. verify that you've got to be kidding is the correct response? Yes. <laughs> you, get, you get so excited for them to show up on your doorstep, right? Uh, late night uh, golf club purchases uh, usually the, the key. <laughs> Those always improve my game. <laughs> Money back guarantee. Yeah. Three balls, no strikes. Your golf ball will spin so much it'll come right back to you. Jerry Blancas knows all about those. Best golf ball ever invented. That's a strike, and it's three and one. You know, I could play with that best golf ball ever invented, and you think it would make any difference? It might with your game. You got Zippo chance. You're good. Yeah. Nice effort on your part. You can spin the ball. You are grinding hard. Out to right field. LJ Ho's waiting for it. And that's a scoreless third for Jordan Lyles that keeps it at one to nothing Seattle after two and a half. For Big and Bright Friday night. First pitch against the Seattle Mariners is at 710. But get here early as the first 10,000 fans will receive an inaugural AL West baseball courtesy of Kellogg's. Stick around after the game for postgame fireworks. That's presented by Marathon Oil. Call 1 877 9 Astros or visit Astros.com for your tickets. 
And you'll see the major league debut of right hander Taiwan Walker. 21 years old born in Shreveport Louisiana. First round pick in the 2010 June draft by the Mariners. Bottom of the third inning. And Erasmo Ramirez with the one nothing lead faces Brandon Barnes. 237 for Brandon six homers he's driven in 30. He has hit 400 against Seattle pitching with a homer four runs batted in. That one's up and in for ball one. Now the Tampa Bay Rays lost they were shut out at home. By the Los Angeles Moreno's of Anaheim two to nothing. The Los Angeles Moreno's. Yeah. Really? They changed their name again. You didn't I hear? hadn't been aware of that. Yep. Thanks for enlightening me. That looked a down, didn't it? That would seem below the knees. Okay. And it's a one ball, two strike count. Jason Vargas through the first seven innings of that shutout. Ernesto Friari got his 28th save. Jake Odorizzi, the loser for Tampa Bay. And that's quite a setback in that tight AL East race. Tampa Bay began the night two and a half, two and a half behind Boston. Boston's on a four game winning streak. And it's two and two. Boston is currently trailing Baltimore. It's two to one Baltimore. They're in the bottom of the fourth inning and the Orioles have now slipped seven and a half back. The Yankees are on their heels. They're eight and a half behind. That's a strikeout and that's number three. Yeah, these strikeouts for Ramirez have come with the high heater. Yeah. So the Red Sox are there at the moment, three in front of the Rays. The Orioles seven and a half, the Yankees eight and a half, the Blue Jays nineteen. You know why that's happening, right? No. Because you you forced me to make a selection the other day, and I chose the Rays. Well, so Joe Madden is probably a furious. Yeah, he is furious at you. Well, he should be. I've been hearing that uh, he's looking for you. His ball club is going to be forced to dress like this on the next road trip. Jonathan VR shoots one foul, strike one. Jonathan, a 268 hitter, no homers, three runs batted in, and uh, we had a little chat before the game. Likes to bunt. He's got that that very lively body, bounces around. He just has a real joy for playing this game, Ash. Well, he does. And he's got the tools to be really good. And he said, yeah, yeah, it's always been that way. Oh, and two. He said, so what? You go for four, you might be four for four the next day. Don't worry about it. Not your best swing right there. He's uh, competing for that funky swing award tonight. Who was it? Uh, Kyle Seeger who yep. got in the first bid? Yeah, and you know, I, I think he needs to hang on since it was almost an identical swing. All right. Put it out there first. You should shouldn't give it up to a guy who just kind of copies your swing. Seeger one VR one. Two balls and two strikes. Well, why not? We've got stats and everything else, right? Oh, well, we do. Can't imagine anything in this game that is not statistically categorized. Ooh. Mm. Strikeout number four. There is something about some guys who at 92 to 93 Ramirez can throw the high fastball and get the swings and misses. And others, Jared Cozart, who can go 94 to 96 and can't get guys to swing through it. Well, this guy has that hop, doesn't he? The way it would look, anyway. First time through the order. Now the second time through, it's Robbie Grossman. He struck out looking earlier. Sharp breaking pitch catches the corner. There's strike one. Well, he throws his fastball about 60% of the time. Also features the slider and changeup and curveball. Now we've seen several changeups early in the game. One and one. Well, Ramirez lost to his last start, five to one to the Angels. That. Fastball just seems to have that little rocket thruster on it, about two feet in front of home plate, Ash. It looks like one of those guys who gets under it just a bit, and instead of it sinking, it just takes off. Two and two. Most guys who drop the arm down a little bit and get under 
will tend to throw a sinker, but not the case here. Change up off the plate, three and two. Aaron Harang is no longer part of the Seattle Ball Club. That gives Ramirez a chance to join this starting rotation. A very good one with two of the Seattle pitchers in the top 10 in ERA. That's another strikeout looking for Robbie Grossman. That's five punch outs for Ramirez who strikes out the side in the third. One nothing Mariners. Tomorrow is another Dollar Dog Night presented by HEB. Enjoy $1 hot dogs all game long. First pitch at 710 against the Mariners. Call 1-877-9-ASTROS or visit astros.com for tickets. Brandon Barnes back in center field tonight. Had a couple of good games on the road and made a really nice Barnsey-like catch to Rob Adam Dunn earlier. I got a ch chance to chat with him about just how much fun he's having in center field this year. And with football in the air, he started to explain to me how he's a lot like a wide receiver out there. And this is coming from a guy who went baseball to concentrate on the football. So I was listening, guys. Oh, yeah, he focuses on that flying object as he did with the football and puts all of his concentration on it, no matter what kind of a hit he's about to absorb. He's been doing that all year. There's ball two to Ibanez. Two balls, no strikes. He hit a fly ball to center earlier. Lines this one out to right center field with top spin on it. And Ibanez is on with hit number three by a Mariner. Yeah, we'll see another pitch. There it is, right through that part of the plate area and up. And that's what's been plaguing Jordan Lyles. And it feels to me predictable. The sequence of pitches a lot of the times. Even when he doesn't fall behind that early effort to. To bring the fastball in and. Hitters are looking for that. Justin smoke struck out earlier. Infield shifts around on smoke the former Texas Ranger. He was a first round pick of the Rangers. He shoots one out to center field. Barnes backing. Barnes is still on the run and makes a catch. Then he tumbles up on Taos Hill. Tremendous concentration there as he gets it back in after a long out number one. Very fine play by Barnes. You know, Julia talking about Brandon Barnes maybe trying to play the part of a receiver out there. There are some mighty frustrated and embarrassed defensive backs if that's the case because he has not missed a one all year. I think he was anticipating with that last step that he was going to hit the hill might have yep. come up just at the base of it. That's the way it looked. He was uh, bracing for that, that higher ground and then he didn't find it. He came down on the warning track so that made it even more difficult. I'm not sure there is higher ground in terms of center fielders and what they've done this year. <laughs> Franklin Gutierrez is the batter. 
Yeah, there's that familiarity with Taos Hill that seemed to work against him on that one. He thought his next step was going to be up on the hill, and it wasn't. So in that case, you could say knowing this ballpark could potentially have hurt him. It might have. Had he not been so good. That smoked out to left field and headed for the seats. A looping two run home run. And Gutierrez hits number seven. That makes it three to nothing Mariners. The ball hit by smoke was a breaking ball and it was crushed to center field but this another fastball up. And Gutierrez didn't miss any of this one. It's his second long ball against the Astros this season. Three to nothing Seattle. Watch the zone. When you're taking batting practice you're asking. BP pitchers to put it right here and that's kind of what these guys are seeing in many instances. And again I feel like the stuff of Jordan Lyles is potentially exceptional and has a chance to be genuine winning stuff. Michael Saunders who walked in the second inning is the batter. And strike one. Well, the two home runs surrendered by Lyles give him 15 homers allowed in 120 innings. It's a one ball one strike count. The Orioles lead at Boston. It's three to one in the top of the sixth inning. Chris Tillman on the mound for Baltimore against John Lester. Now it's a two ball one strike count. Manny Machado had a two run double for Baltimore. Chris Davis doubled in the third run. Fouled away. Two balls, two strikes. That article about Carlos Correa today, he is being compared by some to Manny Machado of Baltimore. Well, that's a great comparison. Andy Machado has become one of the game's truly outstanding third baseman. What did Manny Machado come up at the age of 20? I think maybe 19. 19 and stepped right into the Orioles and really kind of led them to becoming a, quite a winning ball club last year. He is quite an athlete. Maybe playing as good a defense at third base as anybody in the game. Outstanding. They have a good shortstop, or he might be there. That's what he was in the minor leagues, a shortstop. They found they needed a, a guy to play third base. Let's see if we can make this adjustment here, and it came seamlessly. Three two pitches, poke foul. Well, Carlos Correa is the type of shortstop who's pretty large, about 6'3, 205, something like that. And the thought is that uh, since he's still a very young guy, he may put on weight and eventually become a third baseman himself. This is the fifth three ball count for Lyles. And he gets him. He snapped it off for strikeout number two. Curveball kept down. Manny Machado, and we, we talk about him offensively, defensively. This play might have been as good as I have ever seen at third base. Where somehow he knocks the ball down, then picks it up and makes the throw while continuing to run away from first base impossible. And yet he made the impossible possible. <laughs> Slender kid, and he even had to say wow himself. Yeah. <laughs> he wowed himself. Dustin Ackley looks at ball one. Ackley grounded into a double play started by Jose Altuve. Altuve has now been involved in 101 double plays this year. He has started 44 of them. There's a line shot left field. Robbie Grossman leaping. Robbie Grossman hanging on. Good timing. And then he maintained possession of it with a sparkling catch to end the top of the fourth inning with two runs scoring on two hits. 3 0 Seattle.
runs have scored all three runs. Inside the lines is brought to you by Scotch Blue Painters Tape. Scotch Blue, see what you can do. See what Robbie Grossman does on this deep drive to left field hit by Dustin Ackley. Line drive shot and for an outfielder it might freeze you for a moment. For a lot of outfielders it might get by. Robbie Grossman is quite an athlete. And defensively he is shined in left field. Very athletic play. And there was the play earlier by Brandon Barnes on smoke. So the two outfield plays really helped in an inning in which Seattle got two runs. Gave this pitcher a 3 0 lead. There's strike one from Ramirez. Ramirez has not given up a hit through the first three. He struck out LJ Hose back in the first. That ball was running in on his hands that time, and it's no balls, two strikes. Ramirez yeah. had good minor league credentials, too, Ash. Yeah, and I was just about to comment about Robbie Grossman. I think a lot of times we, we tend to think of corner outfielders as being big power hitting guys. That's the first hit. Hose into right field where else? That's where he gets a lot of his hits. And he's aboard to lead off the home fourth inning on the 0-2 pitch. Do you know I was thinking about Robbie Grossman and the way he has played, and he's been exceptional in left field. He's been exceptional with the bat as LJ Hose will shoot one for you once again through that right side. He's just really good going this way. It's his natural stroke. But the name J.D. Shuck comes to mind with the Angels and the way he's played left field this year yep. and swung the bat. And who knows? Robbie Grossman could be that type of player. Could be. Yeah, he's a switch hitter. So that gives him that kind of percentage advantage that J.B. Shuck does not have, being strictly a left-handed batter. Jose Altuve bounced out to shortstop earlier, showing Bud he takes and it's ball one. Nationals have climbed on the Marlins. It's nine to nothing Nationals in the bottom of the seventh inning in Washington. And Gio Gonzalez is shutting out Miami with home run support from Bryce Harper, Jason Worth, and Ian Desmond. Worth hit his 21st, he's number 20 for Desmond, and Harper now has 19. One on one. Was there some talk uh, the other day about Bryce Harper getting a 12 year contract? I didn't hear that one. Strictly rumor. But then again, I'm not his agent, unfortunately. You're not? See, that rumor's been getting around. Yeah. But it's not accurate. It, well, that's what we had been hearing, actually. So good <laughs> thing you put it to rest. I, I, I'm a, I must confess right now, I'm actually the one who started the rumor. By the way, do you work for Forbes magazine? No, sir, I do not. Okay. No, I will distance myself in every possibility there. You and a lot of other people. Yeah, no kidding. Jason Castro on deck. In tight. You don't consider it a good thing if, if you've written a, uh, a, an erroneous article for Forbes magazine and then uh, one of your fellow fellow brethren has to come back and talk about what a bad article it was. Yeah, that, that probably is not going to work out too well. Porter hoping things begin to turn for his club because Ramirez has been really strong through the first three. That's a foul ball back and it's two and two now to Altuve. Effective little slider for Ramirez. He seems to have just selected hitters he throws it to. Very late sharp break. As a major leaguer, he's five and four with a 4.24 ERA. In the minors, his numbers were outstanding: 44 and 20, 3.16 ERA, strikeout to walk ratio of 4.63, and a whip, walks plus hits per innings pitched of 1.15. Keep it right down there near that one mark, and it indicates you've been really good keeping the runners off base. Struck him out looking. That is six strikeouts. Well spotted fastball. Don't know that that catches the plate going by, but Altuve is not happy. And pretty tough to tell as to whether he's unhappy with himself or a particular call. Now, Jason Castro, he walked in the second inning. When you were catching in the minor leagues, Ash, did you ever? Sit around and have discussions with your pitching staff about guys. We've got to get this whip down lower.
You know, we had no clue as to what Whip was or might become. What did you guys fact, talk about? In fact, through my uh, major league career, I don't think I ever heard the term Whip. No, I don't think you did. Yeah. Unless we were talking about a, a song. But, no. ERAs were really the, the key. In the minor leagues, boy, I, I don't know that you even discussed ERAs. I'm not sure you even had the chance to consider what anybody on your team might have had for an ERA. What did you talk about? What dinner was going to be that night? Any chance to get a watermelon that six of us might share tomorrow? And how many guys can you fit in a in an apartment Very over much. the course of an, the, the season? Yeah. yeah, it was tough going. You know, the economy approach. So you'd have what? Yeah, six guys would live in the same place. Who's got the chance to sleep on the floor in the aisle on the bus on a eight hour trip coming up tonight after the game? Did you, uh, how did that work? Who, who ranked ahead of the other guys? To be uh, usually it was kind of a power struggle. And uh, yeah, you just hoped you could get in there early. Crack deep to center field. Way back, Ackley. That's over his head, off the wall. And here comes Hose around third base. And the relay is not in time. He got in as Quintero was trying to catch that ball and turn around and tag him. RBI double for Castro. It's three to one. Castro ripped it. That's an eight game hitting streak. That's 34 doubles for him. Nice job by LJ Hose. But it really is about Jason Castro. He has been phenomenal. I thought Dustin Ackley might have a beat on this ball when he took off initially. Just not to be the case. Look at the speed of the bat going through the hitting zone. And Jason Castro doing it time after time. And now it's up to Hose to be able to score on this play. Dave Tremblay. Wheeling and dealing and a nice job getting that left hand in for the score. Yes it was around the left foot of Quintero. Now Matt Dominguez the batter. And that's up for ball one to Matt. Jason Castro doesn't watch out. He might be a three time player of the week. How about this in August. He's hit 361 in 21 games. With a 653 slugging percentage. Just an amazing performance. That's out to center field. Ackley. Castro going back to tag. Ackley with the catch. Castro's going to hold on as the throw goes in wide of third base. Two outs. And again, I'll go back on Castro. It's not just these streaks of hitting the ball sharply that have impressed me. It's the way he has turned his game around against left hand pitching. He looks great against the righties, but he also looks great against lefties. His approach is about as nice as you want to see. And I, I would never overthink it at this point. Just get that feeling and try to maintain it. Chris Carter with that line drive to third, a broken bad line drive. He's been crushing the ball. Pops this one back. Quintero over for a look and it's out of play. And I was asking Chris Carter before the game, Ash, he said 26 homers. I said, what percentage do you think have been on fastballs? He said, well, I really don't know, but last year I was hitting the slider better than I was hitting fastballs. Now this year it seems that the slider has been problematic to him. Especially from right hand pitching. Monday night, he hit his third two home run game of the season. Had that big game in Seattle very early in the year. And so his numbers are looking really good right now. Rasmo Ramirez has walked one, fan six. Has a three to one lead here in the fourth. In the dirt, and there's the pickup by Quintero. And it's one and one. Well, I don't know, but I'm thinking if I was pitching on a given night at home for the Astros, I might suggest to the skip that we all wear gray for the evening so that Carter could hit in those comfy grays. Could a team really do that? I don't know. Tell the opposing club, you guys get to wear white tonight. Would you lose your home field advantage? <laughs> 
All these questions. Two balls and a strike. It's a confusing time. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if I would care about losing home field advantage if I could get this guy swinging the way he does on the road. He can't explain it. No. There's no way. Two balls, two strikes to Carter. If Ramirez gets this call all night long, he may be untouchable. It's a, a tough call, but one that a lot of hitters, all hitters, have to deal with. And fastball foul back. Good job just fighting one off. Carter was beaten with that fastball. Just a late flick, and he gets a piece to foul it off and stay alive. Bo Porter says if he is on time for the fastball, he is really going to be fine with his hit. Behind the plate, Quintero watches it come back. Out of play. Yeah, a lot of time though when you're on time with the fastball you're in front on the other pitches. And so it's that ability to do what Jason Castro is doing and that's have the hands stay still take your stride and then be able to react to whatever pitch comes your way. They reacted. To what came their way. See they weren't eating anything at the time though. Oh. It's the fans. Who can do multiple things? That multi multitasking fan who really sets himself apart. Well, you know, there's so many challenges these days. You've got your food, you've got your PDA. <laughs> yeah, see, the electronics factor another region in there. There you go. I, like this guy, see? I don't like his chances with the foul ball, especially with the line drive right away. Well, in fact, he's, he may have been beaten by one. He's got no chance. He's going to be late for the fastball. This guy's got no chance. He's relaying our message right now, I think. This young man is already one out, I believe. He's, he's mellow. He's got two already. Doesn't have the hunger to get a third. Does he like the soft one or the hard one better? Looks like a hardball guy. 64 pitches for Ramirez. Carter gets underneath it. This one also drifting back into the seats. Carter with his 26 homers is leading among all players who are with new teams. In 2013, switch from Oakland to Houston in the trade for Jed Lowry. 26 bombs his first year for the Astros. Carlos Lee hit uh, 26 and 09 to this point of the season, this many games. Spiffy shoes there for Ramirez. This one is shallow left. Now Seeger underneath. In the fourth inning, the Astros pick up a run on two hits. They leave a man. It's three to one. Seattle.
presents tonight's trivia. Toyota, let's go places. Posing this question, from 1980 through 91, Ricky Henderson won 11 of 12 American League stolen base titles. Who won the title the only year he didn't win? 1987, stolen base champion in the American League. Right at this moment, he is the greatest of all time. 939. Lou Brock, there to present the trophy to the greatest of all time, Ricky Henderson. Something wrong with that statement. <laughs> Umberto Quintero fouls it away. Did you ever hear anybody say, I am the second best of all time? <laughs> well, come to think of it, I have not. Or I'm one of 400,000 people who have done this. Among runner ups, I have been exceptionally good. This guy, he is the greatest of all time. Toby Keith has a fan. No balls, two strikes. So 1987, stolen base champion in the American League. The Baltimore Orioles are engaged in talks with the Mariners about Mike Morse, an outfielder who's on the bench tonight. Popped up, Altuve. Out number one. So Morse could be uh, making that move. From Seattle to Baltimore they claimed him on waivers the Orioles did so they, if they work out a trade. Apparently he'll be an Oriole according to reports or it could be Josh Willingham of the twins. He's also been claimed on waivers as Dan Duquette of the Orioles is trying to pick up a bat for the last month of the season. I'm not sure I want Morse at the end of the season. The Morse I want is the one that showed up in spring training in the first month of the season. Oh yeah. He was really slamming it. That's true. Strike to Brad Miller. Miller is 0 for 2. Dominguez looks out of VR. VR and Grossman are going for it. And VR had the angle on it. Grossman could have caught it. Out number 2. All right, 87. Stolen base champ. We give up. No, no, think ESPN. Harold Reynolds. Yeah. Now the Seattle Mariners had 60. I don't think of Harold as a guy who stole that many bags, but exceptional stuff. He beat Willie Wilson by one. Gary Reedus. Forgot about Gary Reedus. Yeah. How about Paul Molitor? Yep. And Ricky Henderson had 41. Well, he must have had an injury that cost him a lot of games that year. Strike to Franklin. Franklin, when he homered in the first inning of this game tonight, snapped an 0 for 16. Then he hit a fly ball to center, and Brandon Barnes made an excellent running catch on him. He turns on this one and whacks it foul. Up and in, cut off swing right there, but if you can get the barrel to it, it's effective. Well, he's up there and he retrieved it. I remember when I thought as I grew up as a kid when Maury Will stole 104 bases, I believe 1962, that that was just amazing. It was. Ricky Henderson stole 130 in 1982. Maybe he was the greatest of all time. Think anybody will be in that neighborhood again? Wow. The game uh, for some time seemed to go away from the running game. I think uh, a lot of clubs are trying to get back to it. But you know, I was looking last year at teams that made it into the postseason. Tigers among them. Some of the clubs that made it in didn't run much at all. Sure. It was the slugging game. Yep. That really made the big difference. In fact, of the teams that made it into postseason, some didn't even pitch great. It was the offensive side that carried. Getting harder and harder to predict, isn't it? Who's going to be in the postseason? The bottom line is you have to score more than the opposition on a consistent basis. And if you do that offensively or you do it because of pitching or base running, hey, it works for your club for one year. It may not work the next year. Well, when Billy Martin managed Oakland, that club was running constantly. Chuck Tanner with his clubs yep. did a lot of running. Different era. Two and two. Three times Ricky Henderson stole a hundred plus. 
And then uh, the guys with all that speed can usually help their team defensively, their defensive speed. So back in those big ballparks in the 70s, on artificial turf, that was helpful when you had players like uh, Willie Wilson and Ozzie Smith and Willie McGee. You know what? You make a really good point, though, because a lot of those base paths were AstroTurf. Mm -hmm. And it was a, a firm turf. And I think anybody who's run on that would tell you they would prefer that over running on either dirt or grass. And so I don't know. With the, the natural surfaces now, is it just too difficult to pick up all those stolen bases? Good point. Dirt can be watered down. Franklin strikes out. And that's number three of the game for Lyles. It's three to one. Seattle in the fifth. Tune in to Chevy Hometown Kids every Saturday morning at 9.30 on CSN. Chevy Hometown Kids, where it's not about the score, but the experience. Red Wallace is in the box. Home fifth inning arrives. And there's strike one. The inning couldn't start until that music faded. Wallace uh, grounded out in the second inning. That was a good changeup, Ash. Good looking change. I wonder if that little girl can figure out a batting average yet. Oh. Kids today are so sharp. Way ahead of where we were as oh. kids. I know that. Well, we used to carry those slide rules around on our belts. Well, you did, but. And those pocket protectors. I don't think I ever really figured out the slide rule. How about the pocket protector? Did you have one of those? Never, please, Ronnie. Please. Alpaca sweater. Not of uh try to hook my my infielder's glove to my belt at some point. <laughs> There's a high shot to right field by Brett Wallace. And that is easily a home run for Wallace. Number 12. Three to two game as Wallace hits his second off Seattle pitching this year. He's got some great pop when he takes that aggressive approach. Absolutely no doubt about this ball. Then an up and down season. And the downs pretty down low, but the ups like this way up there as well. Patience paying off with some of these young players. Astros go to the home run ball. And Brandon Barnes takes strike one. Brandon struck out in the third inning. So Ramirez worked three no hit innings, striking out five. Now the Astros are starting to figure him out and get some swings at him. 
They trail by one. Well, Brandon Barnes did uh, another very nice thing. He certainly has done a lot of them this year. He had a friend out to the game tonight, Tiger Kaufman. And, uh, he had visited Tiger in the hospital, MD Anderson. Gotten to know him quite well. So Tiger and his dad came out. And Brandon is treating them to tickets tonight. One ball, two strikes. Not only that, but they got to go on the field for batting practice. They got to meet some of the other players, Craig Biggio. So it was quite a night for Tiger and his dad. Rolled out to second base. Franklin over to first. One out. And uh, Julia Morales was there. And here's a photo of Jose Altuve and Brandon Barnes. With Tiger Kaufman. Tiger's been speaking at some of these area churches. And, uh, he's had some surgery recently. You know, I don't think you'll find an easier guy to root for than Brandon Barnes. No, you won't. You're a solid man. Jonathan VR struck out in the third. Showing but he takes a ball. Ooh, that's a good looking pitch. Where's the case? Talking earlier in the ball game about some people claiming that a catcher takes a strike away from an umpire. In the process taking it away from your pitcher. Quintero came up with that bunt possibility and I think that might have blocked out the home plate umpire. Yeah. Little chop with Ramirez tossing underhand to smoke. Two outs. And it's Robbie Grossman coming up next. Grossman is struck out looking twice. But he doesn't do it again. Yeah, you get to that point where you you realize, okay, come on, swing the bat. For Robbie, quite frankly, with all of his walks that he picked up in the minor leagues, I think at times it has has felt like what he does is to allow himself to get deep into counts. But you know, when we saw him uh, really going with the bat strong, he's had some good aggressive at bats. Mm -hmm. Back in 2011 with the Pittsburgh organization, he had more than 100 walks. It's one on one. He became the first minor leaguer since Nick Swisher to walk 100 times and score 100 runs in 2011 in the minors. Change up is good, and it's one and two. Ramirez, quite impressive with the changeup and the slider that he mixes in, spotting the fastball around. His change is a good one. Bobby hits one off his leg and kicks out toward the second baseman. Franklin doesn't have a play. And an infield hit. Grossman hit a shot. He really thumped it. And he got a carom that was favorable for him. And now Ramirez is going to be visited to see if he's all right to continue. Boy, almost no time between sound of ball hitting bat and then that ball hitting the shoe of Ramirez. Yeah, he thumped it. Ramirez uh, was indicating he took it on the right foot. So Grossman starts a brand new hitting streak after being stopped last night on a 14 game streak. Kick save sometimes works, sometimes. You would just be much better off letting it get into center field, although I don't know there was an option on this one. Yeah, there wasn't much time to move, was there? Let's see how this works out. Boy, that right foot just about gets itself down to terra firma there and gets raked. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's tough. Now that wasn't an effort to stop the baseball. That was just coming back down to earth. A hit for Robbie, and that's number four for the Astros. But a good leadoff man. He has a 340 on base average. And he runs well. A few pitches here for the young right hander, Erasmo Ramirez. Yeah, I don't know that Robbie's ever going to be a, a huge stolen base guy, but your point is well taken. He does run well, and he'll get the extra base. Now with two outs, that's important for the Astros. 
L.J. Hose the batter. Hose single to right field in the fourth inning, and he scored on the Castro double. They're in the ninth inning in Pittsburgh, and the Brewers are shutting out the Buccos four to nothing. Former Pirates, Aramis Ramirez hit his ninth homer. There's ball one, so Milwaukee can only be a spoiler with that 58 and 74 record, and is doing so tonight in Pittsburgh. And Ramirez, the former Pirate, having a night of it. That's in for a strike, and it's one and one. Last night, Marlon Byrd got a lot of accolades as he belted one for the Buccos. His new club. Garrett Cole was their starter tonight. He gave up three earned runs in seven and third. Giovanni Gallardo started the shutout with seven innings. Two balls, one strike. So you have these uh, these general managers like the Pittsburgh general manager Neil Huntington uh, with his acquisition from the Mets of catcher John Buck and the right fielder Marlon Byrd. Now Dan Duquette of the Orioles. Trying to make deals here before the first of September to bolster their club for the final month. And also to get these players on their roster so they could be eligible for postseason. That has to happen before September first. I think it catches some fans off guard because you're told about the trade deadline, July 31st, so much, and maybe confusion sets in about trades that happen later, but once a player clears waivers with all the clubs, then you can make that deal. Mm -hmm. St. Louis uh, appears to be idle today, so the Pirates could be falling uh, one game back unless they can come up with a big ninth inning. They're even in the loss column. Roller out to shortstop, and there's Miller throwing to first. And in the fifth inning, the Astros get a long ball from Brett Wallace. They draw closer with a run on two hits. It's three to two, Seattle. Progressive fan of the game. This is Simone Biles. She's a member of the U.S. Women's Gymnastics Team. She's awesome and lives in Houston. You go to Spring or you live in Spring. She's homeschooled because she does gymnastics seven hours a day. For that, you deserve this. And Thank you're recognized you. before the game. Tell me what it was like to be recognized before the um, game. It's an honor just to be recognized at an Astros game, and I think it's pretty cool. Well, have you developed a favorite fan out there? You have Biles on the back of your jersey. I love that. But do you have a favorite player out there today? I think they're all pretty incredible, so I'd say all of them. That's awesome. And world championships coming up for you, maybe in the fall. Is that what you were saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, best of luck in that. This is the coolest thing ever. Thank Congratulations you. and good luck to whatever world championships. That's what it is, Brownie. Yeah, and uh, she might run for office. She's, she's very, very political, isn't she? Her statements. There's ball one to Seeger. Seeger is 0 for 2 in this game. She wouldn't even pick one Astro over another. The fly ball to right field. Hose backing on it. 
on a warning track for out number one. I think that young lady is probably the perfect age to get ready for the next Olympics. Yeah. Maybe we're looking at a future gold medalist. Let's hope. Well, we'll get uh, a past gold medalist in here tomorrow night, Kat Osterman, right? And a tremendous softball pitcher. Yeah. We'll get a chance to talk with her on the air tomorrow night. And I love that you uh, offered to go down and take batting practice against her. Well, actually, Julia had made that offer earlier. Raula Banez is one for two. Julia got some mad skills with the bat. Well, you remember you and uh, Jeff Blum had her on a road telecast uh, hitting yeah. with high heels on in the cage, right? So we thought that we would follow up on that feature. So Wait a minute. I don't remember this. Are no. You, are you going with the high heels on well, the, uh, on the uh, I, I remember ta I remember taking batting practice in heels, but I don't yeah. remember a green to taking batting practice off Cat Austin. You know, it's been a long year for you, Julia. <laughs> Well, we just thought that the way you looked on that tape, you know, that, that you had the nice short stroke to be able to maybe bang out a few line drives against Cat Osterman tomorrow night. What I remember about that is almost taking out the cameraman. That's my memory of that. Oh, yeah. Dangerous stuff. Yeah, hitting, uh, well, you better better spend some hours in the cage before you get here tomorrow night. <laughs> Julia, where was that that you took that batting practice? That impressive batting practice? That's impressive. It was in Chicago. In Chicago. Astros playing the Cubs. Yeah. So were you out there beyond the Ivy Wall? <laughs> no, I was actually, there was a, across the street, Wrigleysville, ah. there was a bar out there and they had, you know, mm -hmm. they had batting cages now and everything else. Started to add up. Yeah. It was a really cool place. Three and two. Hey, Julia, this is your first year to travel with a major league club. And uh, the Astros had a night game in Chicago last night. So kind of a late arrival. Uh, I'm going to get your opinion after this next pitch on, on the travels. Of the Major League Club. Arrival times and things of that nature. Swing and a miss and a strikeout for the Rodgers. So what do you think of the travel and the routine the players have and. Uh, the fact that they have to deal with certain hours of rest uh, here and there, and then they get short hours of rest on other occasions. That's strikeout number four. What do you think of that? You know, I, I've heard about the, the grueling traveling. You know, I've heard of all that. The guys tell you about all that. But until you're doing it, you don't realize how tired you can be after the late nights and the long plane flights. And it, it can be tough. Yeah. Are you going to stand up for day games for final games of, uh, of stops in cities? Absolutely. Yeah, I think. I think. Uh, we need you. We need you. <laughs> what was that? There was a trip where we came from Seattle. Or we didn't yeah. get home until about 8 a.m. It's that's coming when, up again. Ooh. The sun is up. Yep. That's two balls, no strikes to Justin Smoke. Smoke is 0 for 2. Yeah, I believe we have that same one coming again. Well, people can commiserate with you on that, but uh, the Mariners don't want to hear it with all their travel miles. They are by far the leaders in miles traveled in Major League Baseball. 55,000 air miles in a year for them. Two balls and a strike. Now they got in ahead of the Astros last night because they had a day game in Seattle. But uh, just think of how far they are from Houston. They're 2,500 miles from Houston. I know that family. Do you want to disclose their identity? Well, I'll keep that secret, but line drive to right field, hose in, and he does not make a catch. It gets away from him. And that gives Smoke a chance to reach with two outs in the inning. That was a sinking liner, and it might have gotten right in that bank of lights, and he may have just uh, been unable to track it all the way into his glove. Sometimes the line drive will just kind of tie you up a bit. And boy, I kind of got the impression that could have been the case here. If you keep the glove up around the shoulders, probably an easier play than when you have to turn it over. That's an error. Second ball we've seen dropped recently here by LJ Hose. That's the fourth error for LJ Hose. Now Doug Brocale is out to the mound. Gutierrez, who's two for two with a two run homer off Lyles, will be the batter. Lyles had 91 pitches. There is some bullpen action for the Astros. And that's Kevin Chapman, the lefty. One of two lefties, Eric Bedard being the other one in the Astros bullpen right now. 
Michael Saunders who would follow Gutierrez is on deck. I wonder what umpires pick up over the course of the year as they listen in on pitching coaches talking to their pitchers. Go back and relay it to little league teams whatever the case may be. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the numbers for Jordan Lyles. Gutierrez double to center and then hit that two run homer to left. Oh, they could tell some good stories, that's for sure, about some of the conversations out there. Fodder for the banquet circuit. In the dirt, ball one. Nationals nine Marlins nothing that's a final from Washington Gio Gonzalez going to eight and six. And the Nationals are now three games over 500. They're a long way from the Braves neighborhood. The Royals won at Minnesota three to one. Bruce Chen going to six and two with that victory over Samuel De Duno. He's eight and eight. Greg Holland got his 36 save. Run for Dozier, his 14th. But, uh, Ryan Dozier is a pretty good-looking second baseman. We'll be seeing him next week, Ash. One of those guys you don't hear a whole lot about, but there are, and you were talking about it yesterday. There are just a, a load of very talented young players now coming into the game. Gutierrez moves back. It's two balls, no strikes to him. The Tigers came storming back with four in the ninth today at Detroit and they beat Oakland seven to six. They beat Grant Balfour who's 0 and three Joaquin Benoit got the win he's four and 0. Torrey Hunter had the game winning homer he hit his 16th. Prince Fielder hit his 21st. Brandon Moss number 25 and Jed Lowry number 10 for Oakland it was looking really good for Oakland but it was a three run homer in the ninth for Hunter. And Detroit won it seven to six, but Miguel Cabrera got hurt and had to leave that game. It's a left hip injury, and he's been nursing a problem with that for a while now. That would be just such a big loss for Detroit if Cabrera had to go out for any period of time. And not so much a big worry about making the playoffs. They have a five and a half game lead coming into today, but just the postseason. Ash. Yeah, you would think if you're Jim Leland at, at some point here, you're going to have to consider resting your, your star. Make sure that you're prepared for the postseason. You bet. That's in for a strike, and it's two and one. Now, of course, Oakland, that's a tough loss for the Athletics trailing Texas in the AL West. They were two and a half games back beginning play today. Texas has the day off. In the air foul and out of play. And it's two and two now to Gutierrez. So this AL West race should go deep into the season and Astros still have another series in Oakland. Seattle has I believe a couple more series. With Oakland and the schedule is pretty difficult for the Mariners here in the last month. Playing a lot of contenders. Well, it's not an easy schedule for the Astros either. No, it's really not. They have Cincinnati. There's a shot to center field. Barnes in for it. Barnes makes the catch on that line drive. And it's no runs, no hits. One error, one left. Julia Morales getting ready for Kat Osterman. She's going to take you down, Kat, tomorrow night.
In Arnold's Bar from 4.30 p.m. to 6 p.m. tomorrow. The happy hour will have $5 beer specials on St. Arnold's Selection, Ziggenbach, and Bud Light. Union Station gets gates open early. So come join us for a cold one. Guys. Julia, we just got a call from Kat Osterman. Oh, no. And uh, she said she's going to be putting a little extra effort into her confrontation <laughs> with you tomorrow night. She said that right after giggling. I watched Kat. Yeah. At the University of Texas at Austin. Yeah, and uh, I know, I know not to talk trash to Cat. Did you ever get in there against her? Oh no. Uh, I just think those those high heels would be very daunting <laughs> if she looked in and saw that. She would laugh at me. Where are the lime green ones? Oh. That, that'll get her. <laughs> so Altuve is 0 for 2. 0 and 2 count, and the slider popped up. Smoke comes over and can't get there. Well, Tuve gets another swing with Castro and Dominguez to follow here in a three to two ball game. So the Nationals now have won 14 of 19 and they've moved to within six and a half of the wild card lead. Charlie Furbush, the lefty, is warming up. But you know, Julie, you've seen major league hitters try to hit uh, Jenny Finch and Cat Osterman. Can't do it. They can, it, there's no embarrassment to this, Julia, at all. <laughs> That's easy for you to say. <laughs> Line shot left field corner. Altuve is hustling for second base. And the potential tying run is aboard at second with a double for Altuve, his 22nd. He was ready to hammer that 0-2 pitch. And the Astros, after being no hit through the first three, really swung the bats well the next couple of innings. So what you want to do on that hanging breaking ball, Jose Altuve, has been having some rough ABs of late. Hangs it out. Dollar hot dogs tomorrow night. Jason Castro, the RBI double in the fourth inning, also has a walk in this game. So we've got Cat Osterman, dollar hot dogs. Big and bright Friday night. Fireworks. Big night. That's strike one. Whatever pitchers get to face Jason Castro are going to have big nights and maybe not on the positive side. Yeah. Blowing up some ERAs. Brad Peacock and Taiwan Walker tomorrow night at 710. Airtime 630 for Astros pregame line. No balls, two strikes. It's three to two Seattle. We're at Minute Maid Park. It's Astros baseball. And Seattle got off to a three nothing lead. Bill Brown, Alan Ashby, Julia Morales pictured there. Watched Franklin hit a homer in the first. And then Gutierrez a two run shot in the fourth. The Astros got an RBI double from Castro in the fourth. They got a homer from Wallace in the fifth. And now they actually have more hits than the Mariners, five to four. Down two, they on. It's one and two. So a nice home stand here, Ash. Four with Seattle, three with the Minnesota Twins. Just settle in and enjoy it. And watch this guy swing the bat. That last pitch, a fastball, was designed to be inside where it was and maybe tie up a guy who's overly aggressive. Castro took it as quietly as you want to see. He takes that one for ball two. Head right down on the baseball. When you watch guys that are locked in, this is what it looks like. Well, Eric Wedge is staying with his young right-hander, 23-year-old Erasmo Ramirez. He has Charlie Furbush in the bullpen, but it's only the sixth inning. And Dominguez on deck, and that's fouled away. So Carlos Corporan has been cleared. For light activities, and he'll be doing those this weekend here. And Max Stassi is a ways away. He, he said he's probably going to get another concussion test in a couple of days. And then September 1st, the rosters can be expanded. That's only two days away. 
Well, the Astros hope to get both of them back in early September if everything goes well. I, I wouldn't be surprised at all, Brownie, if uh, Carlos Corporan finds his way onto the roster at that point. It's a bouncer to first. Smoke with the play. Altuve advancing on out number one. This guy has not been retired much. But if you're going to be retired, go ahead and move the runner up. It's a productive out. Now they're going to bring the infield in here in the sixth inning with a one run lead. And Matt Dominguez is the batter. He's 0 for 2. If there were runners at second and third, you likely wouldn't see the infield come in all the way anyway. But with a man just at third base, take your shot. That gives Domingo more holes through the infield and over the infield. That's strike one. That isn't Julia screaming, is it? No. Well, yeah, it is because she just found out that Cat is indeed going to be here tomorrow night. No balls and two strikes to Domingo. He's up against it now. That last fastball was thrown right on by Matt. That's a 265 with men in scoring position. And if he can get a fly ball deep enough, he can score the tying run and Altuve. A lot of guys hit about it, think about hitting a ground ball up the middle in a situation like this. Ball two strikes. Closing in on 100 pitches. Ramirez, who is four and one, has been staked to the early lead, but the Astros have been coming after him. And he fouls it back. The big Chris Carter on deck. I mentioned before I had the pleasure of playing for Frank Robinson way back when. And he used to tell guys don't try to guide the baseball in a scenario like this or a hit and run or trying to move a runner up. He said just be conscious of trying to hit the ball hard. Sometimes hit it on the ground hard but that was his key. Struck him out. Two outs. Strikeout number seven for Ramirez. Yeah, this slider has been quite effective throughout the night this time off the edge. In a big second out. 100 pitches now. And here's a visit from Carl Willis, the pitching coach, comes out. The Astros now with seven strikeouts tonight have struck out 1,259 times this year. And they talk it over with Carter, the batter. Carter has lined a third and popped a third. Willis talks it over with his young right hander, Ramirez. Once again, Mike Everett picking up every little tidbit he can pick up. Well, King Felix Hernandez is 12 and 8 with a 2.97 ERA for Seattle. Sasha Iwakuma, who's pitching in this series Sunday, is 12 and 6 with a 3.03. And with Ramirez, his ERA is 5.44 coming into this game, but he is 4 and 1. They have the makings of a pretty good staff, and the uh, the big debut of Taiwan Walker comes tomorrow night here. Way outside for ball one to Carter. So if Walker is as advertised, very hard throwing right-hander, then the Seattle club could really pitch well for the next few years. Yeah, they've gotten over a hurdle offensively as they've become one of the better. Home run hitting clubs this year. Carter takes and that's off the plate. It's 2 and 0. So Chris with good recognition there. Has worked a favorable count. Big two out hit would go a long way here for Houston. He takes ball three. Chris has walked 57 times. It doesn't appear that the Mariners are interested in throwing him a strike. Brett Wallace is on deck. And maybe they go to Furbush for Wallace. 
So Carter takes the four pitch walk. And that is number two for Ramirez. Strategic walk, it appeared. And you called it. They are going to go to the bullpen. Eric Wedge will bring in his left hander, Charlie Furbush. Ramirez threw the ball very well tonight. Walking two, fanning seven. Pretty impressive. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a bit surprised at his ERA that you mentioned coming in a little bit on the high side because the stuff tonight was quality. He could be a winner. The Mariners are up three to two back to home. Time brought to you by Miller Light. Fifth inning, one two pitch. Brett Wallace rides it out. And the Astros trail three to two on Wallace's 12th home run of the year. On to Rasmo Ramirez. But now Ramirez is out of the game and left to Charlie Furbush, who's retired Brett Wallace all three times. They have hooked up, striking him out twice. Comes in to make it a lefty on lefty matchup in 56 games. He's two and four with a 3.14 ERA. Right. And he has chewed up left hand hitters. They've hit just 135 against him. He's also been effective against the righties. And he's averaging 12 strikeouts per nine innings. Right? And, and you look at all those numbers. I'm surprised they add up to a, an ERA over the three mark. Not that that's bad. But with those batting averages against him and the other numbers you mentioned, I would anticipate one of those uh, minuscule numbers for an ERA. Yes. So maybe he's leaving men on base who are scoring later. She would know. I don't, I, I don't know my dances. I'm not going to try to say I do, but I'm not familiar with some of that. Well. <laughs> Where are you going with that? <laughs> I'm not going anywhere with <laughs> <for> that. <laughs> Runner takes off for second, and Wallace hits it high to center field. Way back to center field. Ackley on the warning track, and he makes the catch. And it's no runs, one hit, two men stranded. We move to the seventh inning in a one run game. Three to two, Seattle.
Here's what happened. First inning homer, Nick Franklin, one nothing Seattle. The Landry's Crawford boxes, and then a two-run shot by Franklin Gutierrez in the fourth inning off Jordan Lyles, three nothing Seattle. The Astros came back. Castro with an RBI double to left center, scoring L.J. Hose. And then Brett Wallace provides run number two on a homer in the fifth inning off Ramirez. Number 12 for Wallace. It is still three to two. The Astros go to the bullpen. Jordan Lyles in six innings, allowing four hits, three runs, giving way to Kevin Chapman with an ERA of zero. Just six in the third innings in the big leagues. Left hand hitters yet to come up with a knock against them. Right hand hitters barely have a knock. One hit allowed in those six in the third innings. He has been. Extremely effective. At one hit, imagine that. One hit in the big leagues allowed, it was a dinger. Yeah. So people might be wondering, wait a minute, he gave up a homer. How can he have an ERA of zero? Well, the runs were on her, two of them. Michael Saunders takes a new strike one. Saunders walked and he struck out. Lyles, six innings, four hits, three runs, two walks, four strikeouts, throwing 96 pitches, 56 for strikes. That's in for a strike for Kevin Chapman on the slider, and it's 0 and 2. Might I say a Brett Wallace in that final swing to end the bottom of the sixth inning? Big time hack against a tough left hander. It was a good swing. Just hit the center field, and that's where a lot of fly balls go. They become outs in this ballpark. That's a strikeout looking, and Chapman just carved up Saunders. Strikeout number five for Houston. Saunders goes back to the bench and says, hey guys, I actually understand right now how it is this guy is allowed just one hit in the bigs. Yeah. Well spotted. Now another lefty hitter, Ackley. Ackley's 0 for 2. Bobby Grossman made a good catch to rob him last time up. There's Paul one. Chapman is the first Astros pitcher to begin his career by making 11 scoreless appearances since Mike Gallo. July of 03. Mike was not the son of Ernest and Julio. There's a strike, and it's <laughs> one ball and one strike. Chapman has not given up a hit to a left handed batter. They're 0 for 10 against him. Two balls and a strike. Humberto Quintero on deck. Did not anticipate at all that I was going to hear about Ernest and Julio. <laughs> not at all. You just never know what you're going to hear or what dance you're going to see. Man, that was a good dance. Well, I'll be going home and trying to work on that dance. It's all about the confidence. Yeah. The confidence level was sky high. Well, it was rather surprising, but in a good way. And there it is. So, how long do you think it'll take us to get this down? Oh, I. I could go all night working at it, and I've got no chance. Well, do you think uh, maybe 2015 would be a good target? Yeah. Well, maybe for you. I just have a feeling my uh, my focus is, is going to wane at some point. But for her, that was quality work. 25-year-old Kevin Chapman from Coral Springs, Florida, and the University of Florida. It's a foul ball. Fourth round pick of Kansas City in 2010. Houston got him in a trade for a man who is here tonight for Seattle, their catcher, Humberto Quintero, and outfielder Jason Bourgeois in March of 2012. And he's going to be facing Quintero if he stays in for one more batter, and there's nobody warming up. He strikes out Ackley. Two punch outs for Chapman. You know, there needs to be one of those uh, street signs that says, Lefties beware wherever Chapman goes. Because these two at bats against Chapman here in this inning would indicate that this guy gives the Astros a chance to have one of those left hand hitting shutdown artists. Yeah, what a start he's off to. Now, Quintero, who has walked and popped a second, comes around for the third time. Chapman got his first save at Anaheim, August 18th. Got a double play uh, to end that ball game. And uh, 
came in and walked Adam Dunn in Chicago three nights ago. The only man he faced there. Quintero fouls it back. So he has become the lefty specialist. He's the only lefty specialist. Eric Bedard is more of the lefty long man. When you can find one of those guys that left hand hitters just lose all chance on, that's a guy you want to keep. It's a very valuable commodity. Chapman had spent the entire year at Oklahoma City until he came up on the 9th of August. Quintero looks at it and it's one and two. Who's the last left handed closer you can think of? I think of Sparky Lyle and he was one of the great ones. But you don't think of that many they they wind up kind of getting stuck in that role of getting left hand hitters out. Billy Wagner. Billy Wild there you go that's an easy one yeah. The role is Chapman. Well you didn't have to make it sound so simple. <laughs> well. I'm being told these names. Yeah I think you did so. You know, come up with those rather yeah. easily. Yeah, it, a role as Chapman and Billy Wagner. Imagine that—a couple of guys who steadily run it over three digits. And then there was Joe Sampito. And of course, Joe had the the arm problems that hurt his cause. Otherwise, I think a, a great career was destined. Well, it just meant that he became an agent sooner. Mm -hmm. And a good one. Line drive to right field. Hose with a catch. It's a one, two, three, seventh for Chapman. He keeps the score. Three to two, Seattle. The Ashes will welcome Olympic gold medalist and two time world champion softball star Pat Osterman to throw out the first pitch. The Astros and Mariners face off at 7 10. But get here early as Pat will be signing autographs from 6 to 6 30 on the main concourse. Call 1 877 Astros or visit Astros.com to get your tickets. And then on the field at 6 50, Cat versus Julia. <laughs> so be here early for that. I've learned not to bet against Julia. No. I don't know. How did I get don't into this? Down now. <laughs> we get you into all kinds of things. How about that dance? Uh, you think you could do that dance that young lady was doing in the stands? That was, it was very impressive. Yeah. It was a very impressive dance. You got this motion. Okay, good. That's it. That's part and she of it. had this going. Yeah. I need to find her. Well, if you didn't have the mic, you could really do the whole thing. You're right. I, but I'm not going to put it down. Tougher. I'm not going to. I haven't stretched, I haven't warmed up. Yeah, it's important. <laughs> important to uh, make the preparations. I don't think there was any stretching was, involved in there that dance. There it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's good stuff. She had attitude. Though. Look, uh -huh. yeah, you got to you know, get a little, <laughs> little bit cockier there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, the, the game is starting. It's uh, Brandon Barnes <laughs> against Charlie Furbush, 3 to 2 Seattle. 
they strike one. Brandon is struck out and grounded out tonight. The Braves beat the Indians three to one. This Medlin helping the Braves to complete their sweep of that series. Medlin goes to 11 and 12. Beating Ubaldo Jimenez is 9 and 9. Craig Kimbrell got his 43rd save. That's amazing. Yorvis Medina is uh, warming up the bullpen for Seattle. It's one ball, one strike. He is amazing. McCann hit his 19th homer for the Braves, and they're just, just taking off. They're going to be able to clinch early and get people help. They've been toying with the National League. Yeah, they have. Haven't they? Who would have foreseen that one? Let's see. They have the best winning percentage in the National League, 80 and 52, 606, and that's the best in the majors right now. They've won four in a row now, and they have a 13-game lead over Washington. Their home record is 47 and 18. I would have gotten completely hung up because I thought that was who the Washington Nationals were. Yeah. People were right there with you. Two balls and two strikes. Chris Johnson was one for four tonight. He's hitting 329 as he tries for the batting title this year. Foul away. Michael Bourne was in town in Atlanta, the former Brave, now with the Indians. He's hitting 268. The Indians uh, have a series in Cleveland against the Astros coming up in September. The Indians released Brett Myers today. Former Astro. Barnes to center field. Ackley. Mariners try to snap this six game losing streak. They've just come from that 0 and 6 homestand. They're beginning an eight game road trip, which takes them on to Kansas City for four after this four game series. We're hearing about how tough their schedule is in September. We'll take a look at it. Jonathan VR is 0 for 2. Let's see. They go to Kansas City and they're home for Tampa Bay and Houston. They go to St. Louis, Detroit, and Anaheim. And they finish at home against Kansas City and Oakland. They do have a lot of contenders coming up. Jonathan BR looks at it. It's strike one to Jonathan. The Seattle bullpen has 13 wins, 23 losses, a 4.51 ERA, 14th best in a 15 team American League. Robbie Grossman's on deck. Ball makes it 0 2 to Jonathan BR. Chris Medlin with that 11 and 12 record, seven shutout innings tonight, as his ERA at 3.58. Craig Kimbrell's ERA is 0 0.97 for Atlanta. Please. <laughs> he followed Billy Wagner around as much as he could when Wags was a brave. And seems to have rubbed off on him. One and two. What does he call that pose when he stands on the mound and looks for his for the sign? Um, I don't know. It's like a a vulture of some sort, just yeah. getting ready. I chop the shortstop. Miller comes in, gets a big hop, runs him down. Two outs. Astros five and seven against Seattle. They're two and four against them here at home. They've played better against them in Seattle's home ballpark. Now Robbie Grossman, but there's going to be a pitching change. And Grossman with the right handed side being his better side. Watches this move. That'll be it for Charlie Furbush. He goes one inning, allows no hits, no runs, no walks, no strikeouts. He gets a hole. Hanging on to this three to two lead, we'll be right back.
into the bottom of the seventh. 3-2 Mariners on top. Astros, Dynamo, Rockets, and more. We have all your sports news covered. Check out Sportsnet Central seven days a week at 6, 10, and midnight on Comcast Sportsnet, your home of your home teams. Yes. Thanks, Julia. Well, she has shifted her focus now to the drums. Very musically inclined lady. Yoervis Medina. He's four and three with a 2.57 ERA. Comes in 56 innings and four homers allowed by Medina. He's been uh, getting a lot of holds. He's first in holds among rookie relievers in the American League with 14. One of those intriguing right-handers that deals with left-hand hitters. Lefty's hitting just 170. So sets up very well in this regard. It does. Robbie Grossman is hitting 256 left-handed, 317 right-handed. Robbie is one for three tonight. Hells that one back there, strike one. Do you know if you're Eric Wedge, though, you also have to deal with in a one run game which side is the more powerful side? And to this point, for whatever reason, it's been this the left side. Lately, though, since he came back uh, from that first trip to the majors, he's provided some pop from this left handed side. He's driven some balls for homers. Doubles. He went to a lighter bat as a left handed batter. One ball, one strike, and he's more aggressive. Three of the four home runs coming from this left side, and they were bombs. Absolutely, no doubters. It's two balls and a strike. He may be turning it loose on this next pitch. Baltimore has their Utah Street out in right field, and the plaques are awarded for guys who hit it out there. Robbie Grossman has himself a plaque. He fouls that one back with a good cut. Two balls, two strikes. An article in the uh, Bleacher Report, which we get online from time to time, about Carlos Correa. Good comparisons are made. One is made comparing him to David Wright. Hmm. Can't really see that, can you? No, I don't. Uh, visually, I, I don't see the comparison. Struck him out to end the seventh inning. That's strikeout number eight for Mariners pitching. We move to the eighth inning, and it's three to two. Up brought to you by Chevron. Care for your car. It's a major league debut for the young right hander, Taiwan Walker, born in Shreveport, Louisiana. And Brad Peacock goes for the Astros. He's three and four since his recall. He's two and one with a 2.88 ERA. Good numbers for Walker on the minor league side. Brad Peacock watching as Kevin Chapman is on the mound. It's three to two, Seattle. Chapman out of one, two, three, seventh inning. Now he faces Brad Miller. Miller's 0 for 3. Bang.
Hangs out a line drive into right center field. LJ Hoes over and gets in front of it. He holds him to a single with a good play. So, so Chapman has allowed a second hit now in the major leagues and a first to a left hand hitter. Yep. That was well done. Just a fastball out over the plate. Josh side is warming up for Houston. The batter is Franklin. Franklin hit a home run in the first inning. And the switch hitter now moving around to bat right handed this time up. He is one for three in this game. In the third inning, Brandon Barnes made a very good catch on him. As a right handed batter, he's hitting 213. Chapman with the throw on Miller. Miller's three for five in stolen bases. That was hit number five. Each club has five hits in this game. Is in type it in tight at third as the pitch is a ball and it's a one ball no strike count. As Zide warms up, and Taiwan Walker moving up from Triple A to Coma to take the start tomorrow night. Very big moment in the Seattle franchise this year. He was listed as the number five prospect in baseball by MLB.com heading into this season. Back and it's a one ball, one strike count. He'll be debuting at age 21 and 17 days. Fifth youngest in Seattle history to debut as a starting pitcher. Is called by Franklin. He steps away with a 1 1 count. Why do people scream? There's been a lot of that going on tonight. And the whistling has taken over. Yeah. One ball, two strikes. Primal instincts, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. At the ballpark, does it fit in? Well, it's allowed. At the uh, scream of Janet Lee in the movie Psycho, do you remember that one? Yeah, see, that's appropriate. Yeah. At that moment, with a toss over to first base, inappropriate. True. We're going to miss there by Franklin, and Franklin strikes out. That's three strikeouts for Chapman in this game. Up and away, probably off the plate. Franklin, not a big guy, but we've seen him with some pop. Yes. Kyle Seeger's off for three. Went down to third base, and it was a check swing call by Tim Welke, the crew chief. Ball one. Chris Tillman got his 15th win for the Baltimore Orioles. They beat Boston three to two in Boston tonight. It's a ball to make it two and zero. Oh.
It is three balls and no strikes to Seeger. Ibanez is on deck. See you checking out One Direction. Are you a big fan? Not yet. How about you? I would have been had you said yes. <laughs> That's a walk to Seeger. Third walk for Astros pitching tonight. Two men on and one out now for Raul Abanez. Abanez is one for three. Bo Porter's club has lost a bunch of games by one run. 27. Trailing by one now. Jonathan VR, Jason Castro meet at the mound, and Chapman talks it over with them. Truth is, I would have joined in on the screaming had you said yes. <laughs> Bo Porter was asked about September call ups today in his media session. He said, Well, we're talking about it, but haven't really made the decision yet. And it's a, a different kind of year for the Astros with. The top four clubs in the minor leagues already having clinched playoff spots and two more within range of clinching. So there could be six Houston minor league affiliates headed for the playoffs. We just don't remember the last time that happened with one organization in the majors. Well, somebody will research it. Ibanez singled and he rode home on the two run fourth inning homer by Gutierrez. That's ball one. The Tri City team had a magic number of five to clinch at last report. And he's playing a doubleheader tonight. I don't even know how many years teams have had six minor league clubs that you would uh, qualify in that regard. So maybe the search doesn't have to go back too far. Good point. That comes in for a strike. Chapman has a good slider. Big sweeping breaking ball with that one. To a right hand hitter, probably not a good pitch right here. To a lefty, it's going to lock you up. Now, Tri City and Greenville are the two teams that have not clinched and can do so. Altuve comes after it. Quick toss. VR gets the out at second and the out at first. They had to be quick and they turned it 4 6 3, doubling up Ibanez. No runs a hit. A man left. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning. Three to two, Mariners. MLB.com at bat is the number one source for live baseball everywhere you go. Available for iPhone, iPad, Android, and BlackBerry 10. At bat delivers Astros baseball with live audio, pitch tracking, stats, news, highlights, and more. Text at bat to 31826 or visit Astros.com for details. Next. Thanks, Julia. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning. The Mariners lead it 3-2. to two. 
They've used three pitchers so far. Yoervis Medina came in to strike out Robbie Grossman, looking to win the seventh inning. Now it'll be Jose Altuve and Castro in the Houston eighth. All have hits in this game. Hose singled in the fourth inning. He's one for three. He rode home on the Castro double to left center. Updating the injury to Miguel Cabrera of Detroit today. It is discomfort in his abdomen. And he says he's going to play Friday. In the air and on the infield. Franklin underneath. One pitch went out for Medina. And Altuve will follow. He doubled to left in the sixth. He's one for three. Cabrera has been bothered by strain in his groin, abdominal, and hip area. Yeah, that Jim Leland is going to be the guy right in that lineup, and and I, I know how it goes. If you got Miguel Cabrera saying he's playing, he's probably playing. But at some point, I think Leland's going to have to sit his star a little bit and make sure that he's healthy. Mm -hmm. Well, they're playing Cleveland starting tomorrow night, second place team. Yeah. Yeah, and that's a obviously a great point. You've got to be able to beat those guys and. Sent him off into the sunset. Ball one to Altuve. Castro on deck. As they pretty much are hanging on the sunset anyway. Yeah. How is the sunset in Cleveland anyway? Depends on the proximity to the old ballpark. The mistake by the lake? Yep. Closer you get, less impressive that sunset tends to get. Chai Jen Lowe is warming up for the Astros. Altuve taking all the way. Looks at a strike, two and one. Did you ever go fishing in uh, the lake up there? Lake Erie? <laughs> no, I did not. No, I get in my car and drive quickly once the ball game was over. They still have the guy who beats on a drum every home game. Actually, I don't know, but I, I bet you somebody is filling that all-important role. Hey, that, was a, that was a good sinker right there. Yeah. Jose Altuve every once in a while would juice up with a big swing, trying to yank one to left field, and that might have been one of those efforts. That's ball three and it's a full count. The Mets with the Phillies 11 to three. Brewers beat the Pirates four nothing. Gallardo beating Cole. Bouncer goes foul third base side. Royals uh, knocked off the Twins three to one. Again, a good swing, and, and you can see barrel out front. That was Altuve, I believe, trying to get this thing tied quickly. Kyle Seager, the third baseman, he's a good one. That Orioles score was three to two at Boston. Chris Tillman now 15 and four. He beat John Lester, who's 12 and eight. Jim Johnson got his 41st save, and Shane Victorino hit his 12th homer. For the losing Red Sox. That chop goes foul for Seeger. Dave Tremblay coming up with it. He stole it from Seeger. Took it right out of his glove. And no apology. No. When I choose to make a play in front of you. I don't give in. <laughs> Big breaking ball caught him looking. Altuve a strikeout victim. That's number two for Medina. It's just frozen time. Jose had had a couple of good swings, but he gets had with this one. It's a good breaking ball. There's a guy who likes to play the game. Some guys just get all. Been out of shape when they strike out, and you guys are just having fun with the game and, and 
They're intense in their own way, but I, that's who Altuve is for me. He just loves playing this game. Jason Castro has walked. He ripped a double. That drove in Hose in the fourth inning, and he grounded out. The Astros will look back at that sixth inning if they lose this one by one. They'll be asked about it. There's strike one. Castro had doubled in the run in the fourth, and they got a homer in the fifth. In the sixth, they got a leadoff double from Altuve. Castro advanced him to third with a ground out, and then Dominguez struck out, and after a walk, Wallace hit a fly ball to center. Now, I don't know that Castro is allowing himself to think home run. Have a feeling when he hits home runs, he does it by just doing things right. But you know he would like to tee off on one right here. It's a one ball, one strike count. Richard Justice is tweeting that the Indians are hitting 219 and scoring an average of 3.3 runs per game. During their 9 and 13 slide. So they do not have a lot of momentum as they prepare to meet the first place Tigers. And they've got some negative momentum as they close in on the sunset, as you mentioned. Two balls and a strike, but maybe they'll pull a quick reversal. Who knows? Oliver Perez is in the bullpen. Baseball fans have fun this time of year when. Uh, they think they have things figured out, and then somebody upsets the apple cart, has a big week. A lot of people thought they had some Astros clubs figured out when Phil Garner was running that ship, and boy, did he turn things around late in the season. Yeah, he wouldn't he wouldn't give up on anything. Three balls and a strike. Saw the car early on this year. Haven't seen him in a long while. Won't you see him at his golf tournament in September? Oh, you bet. Or uh, you'll see him as well. It's Ronnie. October, right? Um, October. November, I believe. November. Oh, right. it could be. I'm One of those sure months. Right Sometime in 2013, we'll see him. Coming up. You'll be there, right? Yes. Well, Jason, I think he maybe ball four started to discard the bat, but it was called strike two, and that's a full count for Jason Castro with Domingo on deck. You know, when you're trying to juice the ball, usually your body is kind of jumping and flinching. Not at all for Castro. And watch if he gets a, a swing here. Just about guarantee he'll get a good one. Mm. At strike three, and he just flings the bat down to end the eighth inning. And that's three strikeouts among the four batters Medina has faced three to two Mariners. Is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at Southwest.com. And by your local Toyota dealer. Toyota, let's go places. We move to the ninth inning and another one run ball game. The Astros have been playing a lot of those recently. He's moving and grooving. Who's going to be on the winning side? 
He's one of 22,203 for this opener of the four game series. I think we got a girl for this guy to dance with. We definitely do. He's got some moving parts. And now Kevin Chapman goes out for the ninth inning. <laughs> Chapman has pitched a couple of scoreless frames so far. We usually don't see him stay in games this long. This is his longest major league outing so far. Justin Smoke, the switch hitting first sacker, will move around to the right side of the plate. He's 0 for 3 in this one. Smoke is a 171 hitter as a right handed batter. And that's ball one. You wish you could dance like that, Ash. Sounds like a song. <laughs> Ground ball third, Dominguez. Over the walls. One out for Chapman. Each club with five hits. The Astros have the only error on the night. Seattle is stranded four. Houston has left five. Here at beautiful Minute Maid Park. Where the Mariners grabbed a 3 0 lead, they got a first inning Franklin homer, a two run shot from Gutierrez in the fourth. Gutierrez also has a double, and now Bo Porter comes out with Gutierrez coming up for the fourth time. He's had a right hander at work in the bullpen. Chai Jen Low. And what a nice job by Kevin Chapman tonight for two and a third innings. He keeps it close. Mariners three, Astros two back to home. Lead for the Mariners. Kevin Chapman has kept it close with two and a third innings of one hit shutout baseball, walking one, fanning three, and now turns the ball over to Chai Jan Low. In 10 games, he's 0 and 2 with an ERA of 2.61. Impressive numbers against left hand hitters. 167. Odd that the right hand hitters are hitting about 100, 100 points higher against Low. Very good fastball. Oh, two saves and four opportunities coming in now with Gutierrez the batter. Gutierrez is two for three, a double, a two run home. And then he lined to center field in the sixth inning, so he's really been on it all three times tonight. What a good job by Chapman. Kept the pitch count down as well. 29 he's, pitches. He's starting to look like that left hander you can count on in the pen. Well, it's a good year for seasoning for many of the Astros players. They have 14 rookies on this 25 man roster. And Lowe is another one. He's ready to go now after pitching for the last time here four days ago against Toronto. He got a blown save and a loss in the 2 to 1 game. Came in with a 1 nothing lead in the ninth inning, gave up one hit, and two runs. He walked three. And Gutierrez is all set. It 
It's in for strike one at 95. Kevin Chapman now has tied a franchise record without allowing an earned run in his first 12 major league appearances for the Astros. Looping liner hit in front of Grossman into left field. Tom Martin is the first man to have 12 consecutive scoreless appearances starting his major league career with the Astros. Left hander Tom Martin. Yeah. Back in 97, I believe. Eh? Is that the year you were bullpen coach? Well, let's see, 90. Yes, that is. 97 was my coaching year. 98, the first year working in the booth. So then you are the uh, the common element in this record. Must have played a large part in that record. Yeah. Michael Saunders with two strikeouts and a walk. It's the Allen Ashby record. Six degrees of separation between greatness and anything else. If you go back to, to the beginning of club history, you can get through the entire 51 years with only just a few players spanning those years. But you're probably not inclined to do that. Right? One ball, one strike. I am completely lost with that comment. <laughs> Let's begin with Bob Espermonic <laughs> in 1962. Yes. The first batter in the history of the ball club. And he was here for several years. And now let's pass the torch to Larry Dirk. See, here's the deal. When I first came to the big leagues, my manager was Bob Aspermani's brother, Ken Aspermani, managing the Cleveland Indians at the time. So, the, you know, the six degrees of separation thing is starting to play in real easily now. Okay. Well, okay, let's go with Aspermani for the first six years or so, and then Larry Durker takes over, take it to the end of his career, pass the torch to Jose Cruz, and then you give it to Craig Biggio, and then Carlos Lee, and then we kind of ran out last year. Well, see, I think Biggio and Bagwell are going to co hold that thing. Yeah. Saunders so strikes out. Well, that fastball is alive, angry at times. Fastball was angry that day, my friend. So now we add Castro to the mix. Dustin Ackley comes up. So you cover the entire Astros history with Aspermani, Durker, Cruz, Biggio, Lee, and Castro. Six players take you through 52 years, 52 seasons. Is this what, we, what they call simplifying? Not really. This is called boy you must need a life here pal. You see yeah well I mean that's good. <laughs> Just don't feel like letting you off that easily. No no never. Well, you must admit those guys all had a lot oh, of staying that's, power. That's, that's no? quality work right there on your part. Thank you. Don't know how Rusty Staub and Joe Morgan and Cesar Cedeno and you guys might feel about that assessment of things. Not real good. We're just looking at guys who had long careers. Well, okay. With that's this ball club. I'm going to publicly let you off privately, however. You mean I won't be getting any rides in your Mini Cooper? If you can fit in, you're invited. That could be an issue. Two balls and strike, especially after this last road trip. Just want to remind you, it is the wife's Mini Cooper. I just happen to be allowed to borrow it occasionally. Last road trip, man, you were you were the hit of Chicago. Oh. Bouncer left side, backhanded, VR throwing to second. Whoa, what a scoop by Altuve. 
for the force to end the top of the ninth inning. Beautiful play by VR and Altuve. No runs are hitting the man stranded. We go to the bottom of the ninth inning, three to two, Seattle. We're getting ready for the bottom of the night. Stay tuned for Astros Post Game Live presented by MD Anderson, making cancer history. Eric Young is busily preparing alongside Marius and uh, Danny Farquhar with an 0 2 record, has a 4.67 ERA, has nine saves in 12 opportunities. Tom Wilhelmson just was completely ineffective and was sent down to the minor league so Farquhar got a chance to take over. And he is uh, from Toronto as a draft choice in 08 and then the Yankees got him and traded him to Seattle for Ichiro. And, uh, he has some area roots. He went to Louisiana Lafayette. Born in Pembroke Pines Florida. His numbers say left hand hitters have next to no chance against him in the inning. That first left handed bat will be swung by Brett Wallace. So a couple of hitters come first Matt Dominguez and Chris Carter. Now he was that young guy that was unproven. And like so many young guys, just don't get a chance in the big leagues and you kind of bounce around and finally you find yourself with some ball club. And that's what Farquhar seems to have done with the Mariners. He may have found quite a role with them for a long time. 25. Matt Dominguez is 0 for 3. Chris Carter is on deck. Brett Wallace is due up third here in the last of the ninth for Houston. And that's upstairs, ball one. Mark Warwa, as you might have noticed, has nine saves and 12 save opportunities since he moved into the closer role. He's 9 for 10. Wilhelmson moved out of the picture. Two balls, no strikes. Juarez Medina went an inning and a third. He gave up no hits, no runs, with no walks, and struck out three. Charlie Furbush had one perfect frame. So it's been airtight relief work for Erasmo Ramirez, who went the first five and two thirds, but three and zero here on Domingo. Marquardt has retired 43 of his last 52 batters. Almost hit him, and a four-pitch leadoff walk for Marquardt. Well, that's the way to make the skip of the pitching coach tickled. Now, that last thing you want to do when you leave the bullpen is make sure that you are throwing strikes, and when you hit the mound, your warm-up tosses have to be about throwing strikes. Now the pitch runner is Juan Gonzalez taking over for Matt Dominguez. The Astros going with a faster player representing the time run. Chris Carter is the batter. Carter is 0 for 2 with a walk. 
Last outing for Farquhar was day before yesterday, and he took the loss against Texas and had a balk called on him. That was instrumental in that game. There's strike one. Farquhar has pitched twice against the Astros. Carter takes a look at it. It's a count at one and one. The first time Farquhar pitched here was July 19th. He gave up two runs in one third of an inning in that game. Had a big nine to three lead in the eighth inning, and then he pitched a scoreless ball here two days later. Wallace is on deck. Strike to Carter, and it's one and two to Chris. How about that little Mariano like cutter? Yeah. It's this thing move away. Sure did. Mark Barr came up from Tacoma May 17th. He had six saves there at AAA before his call up. Carter is down on strikes for out number one. That turns to four seamer with hair up to 95. This ball is. Really cut loose. Carter trying to go with that short stroke, just couldn't get to it. Wallace homered in the fifth inning. Brett, one for three. Brandon Barnes is on deck. There are not any. Left handed hitters on the bench tonight. The switch hitter Marwin Gonzalez in as a pinch runner now. Wallace takes ball one. With Barnes and VR to follow, this is probably where you want that message relayed to Brett Wallace. Hey, look, you're the guy that can drive it out of the ballpark. We want you getting some really good swings here. Bouncer Farquhar. Throwing Miller there, Miller the middleman on a double play to end it. One six three, and the Astros lose by one run for the 28th time. There's 16 and 28 in one run games. Farquhar starting the game ending double play. I think Wally had that in mind. He wanted to get the big swing, but not much.